Hey everyone, Rose back again. Um, today I wanted to talk about the damage that Amberlynn has done to her body and how physical rehabilitation and diet change might help to reverse those effects. So let's get into it. All right, people. So first off, I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. Um, it really means a lot that y'all are interested in what I have to say. I wanted to plug my Instagram here. It'll be linked down below if you want to follow me. It's um, at Rose is Ranting. So if you want to follow me over on that, that would be awesome. The reason I wanted to film this video is that I had gotten a comment from Space Junk and I'll throw that comment up on the screen somewhere. And they were interested in hearing about um, what kind of physical rehabilitation Amber might need and what damage she's done to her body and what what's reversible and what isn't and kind of the physical challenges that she would have pre and post weight loss. So I want to warn you now, this is going to be a long video. I've got like four pages of notes. So if you see me looking down, I'm reading my notes. Um, it's going to be a lot of information. So I just wanted to warn everybody. So buckle in, grab a snack and we'll, we'll get into it. So the first thing I wanted to start off with is talking about the damage she's doing to her joints, her hips, her knees, her ankles, her back. Um, I can really only, today I'm only really prepared to talk about the damage she's done to her knees because there's actually been research done. And um, the research shows that each extra pound of weight on a person's body adds four pounds of pressure to that person's knees. So that would break down to if someone weighed 10 extra pounds or were, t were 10 pounds overweight, that would be the equivalent of 40 extra pounds on their knees. If someone was 100 pounds overweight, that's 400 pounds um, of extra pressure on that person's knees. So I wanted to sit down and actually calculate how, m how much extra pressure was being applied to Amber, Lynn, Amber Lynn's knees. And so the first thing I had to do was decide how many pounds overweight she was. So the way that I did it was I calculated her ideal body weight. And the first question is going to be, well, what's ideal body weight? And um, what's it used for? Ideal body weight is just what someone at um, a certain height should weigh. So it's their ideal body weight for a person's height. Um, and the reason that people calculate ideal body weight, it's for doctors to um, prescribe proper medicine dosages for a person's ideal body weight. They don't necessarily, especially like if Amberlynn walked into a doctor's office, um, the doctor wouldn't want to prescribe a dosage based on 567 pounds. They'd want to prescribe the dosage based on what her ideal body weight would be for someone that's five foot three. So... When I put um, five foot three into the ideal body weight calculator, which I'm gonna link down below also in case any of you are curious, um, five foot three inches, the ideal body weight is 116 pounds. So um, if Amberlynn walked into a doctor weighing 567 pounds, the doctor wouldn't go by the 116, they would do an adjusted body weight and they do adjusted body or adjusted ideal body weights when someone weighs 30% over their their measured ideal body weight. So when I put that into the adjusted ideal body weight calculator, the five foot three, I came out with 296 pounds. So that would be Amberlynn's ideal body weight if she went into a doctor and they were going to be prescribing her medicine or something like that. So the next thing I did was take her weight, which is the 567. I subtracted the 296, which is her ideal body weight. And that comes out to 271 extra pounds on Amber Lynn's body. And I get that in reality, it's much more than 271 extra pounds, but this is something I could easily calculate out. So I, this is just what I'm going to go with because you take those 271 extra pounds, you multiply it by the four pounds of extra pressure per pound and you get 
1,084 extra pounds of pressure on Amberlynn's knees. So that's a lot of extra pressure and it's slowly destroying her knees. I guarantee you that every time she stands up, it hurts. Her hips hurt, her knees hurt, her back hurts, her ankles hurt because you're putting so much extra pressure on all of those joints. So any kind of weight loss at all is going to take some of that extra pressure off and it's really gonna help alleviate the knees. It's gonna make the knees job a lot easier and it's gonna make her knees last longer. But I can pretty much guarantee you that in some point in life, Amber will need a knee replacement if she makes it that long. She probably will, at some point will also need hip replacements depending on how, how those joints look as well. The next thing I wanted to comment on was um, her vital organs and um, things like her heart, her lungs, her liver, her kidneys. For someone that weighs 597 pounds, all of those organs are working overtime in comparison to someone who's an average weight. The heart has to pump blood to all of her entire body. Her lungs have to supply oxygen to all of her entire body. So they're working hard to do that, harder than an average sized human's heart and lungs would normally be working. So of course she's gonna be causing damage to those organs of course, some of that damage can be reversed if she gets healthier and changes her diet and loses weight, but not all of that damage can be reversed. With physical rehab, you can optimize the function of your heart, your heart and your lungs especially, to kind of build up strength and build up endurance. But again, that damage has been done and not all of it can be undone. The next thing that I wanted to address were some of her lab values, things like her cholesterol levels, her A1C levels, um, and oh, and then we'll get into the lymphedema diagnosis that she talked about. So cholesterol levels are something that need measured with a blood test. So she would actually have to go into a doctor and they would request blood, a blood test to test her cholesterol level. The ideal cholesterol level is under 200 points um, and a total cholesterol lab values are made up of three things. Triglycerides, LDL, and HDL levels. Um, ideally triglycerides should be under 130, your LDL should be less than 100, and your HDL should be greater than 60. And the reason that um, a higher HDL is better is because um, HDL is representative of the healthy protein in your body and so the higher that number is in your body um, the less likely you are to get heart disease or develop heart disease. Um, again we don't know if Amberlynn's cholesterol levels are high. Anybody's cholesterol levels can be high, thin, um, obese, it, it doesn't matter. Your cholesterol levels can be high. It's mostly based on your diet. If she wanted to kind of correct her cholesterol levels, the first things that she would need to do would be to eliminate saturated fats and trans fats from her diet and start eating more polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats. Um, poly and monounsaturated fats are found in things like fish, nuts, avocados, um, olive oils. It's all the healthy fats that people talk about. Um, peanut oil, those are all examples of things that you could add to your diet to improve your HDL level and decrease your LDL level. Also, of course, exercise is going to improve your cholesterol levels, improve your HDL, and lower your LDL. Making changes to your exercise and increasing your activity and also changing your diet is going to also lower your blood pressure. So if she's having issues with blood pressure, and I know that she had talked about Phentermine causing her to have an increased blood pressure. So if that's kind of like a continuous thing. Oh, and she did talk about it at the doctor's office too when she went um, and the doctor invited her to do the weight loss challenge with them. She had said that the doctor mentioned that her blood pressure was high. So that's also something that can be fixed with a change in diet and a change in exercise. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was A1C levels, which is also something that you get tested through, through a blood test. And A1C levels are what we use to determine if someone has um, type 2 diabetes or if they're a pre-diabetic. 
what it does is it's a measure of your blood sugar levels over the last three months. Um, a normal A1C is below 5.7. Um, between 5.7 and 6.4 is considered pre-diabetic and then 6.5 and higher you're, you would be diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes. So ways to work on decreasing your A1C level is the same as the cholesterol exercise and a change in diet. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as the physiological effects that Amber has had on her body would be lymphedema and the reason I wanted to talk about this was because one Amber's come out and said that she has lymphedema and um, the other reason is because lymphedema is actually treated by physical therapists and occupational therapists who who take extra training and get specialized in lymphedema therapy lymphedema let me I'm gonna try to explain what it is lymph you have lymph nodes throughout your entire body and what they do, what they are is, is it's a network of vessels in your body that transport clear lymphatic through, fluid through your body and then back up to your heart. It's um, to filter out toxins in your body. And what happens with lymphedema is those vessels get clogged and that leads to swelling and fluid retention. Most of the times when I've seen it, it's been in leg, the legs and the arms. Um, people um, who have breast mastectomies after breast cancer, a lot of times they get have lymph nodes taken out too, and they can get um, lymphedema in the arm on the side that the breast was taken from. Lymphedema can be treated, but it's not curable. So it's not something that Amber can reverse even if she were to lose weight um, or change her diet. Um, so treatment for lymphedema most times includes wraps that go on the legs or the arms and they're like a tight woven wrap that you would start at the bottom of the limb and then work your way up towards your heart because the goal would be to push the fluid from down here where it's swell swollen and push it back up into the heart back through the lymphatic system. Um, the other thing that I've seen used is um, pumps. So something that would go around the arm and it, get, it blows up with air and it will actually pump the fluid back up into the limb. Now, I wanted to talk about what would I do if Amber Lynn Reed walked into my clinic and was gonna be treated by me. The two settings that I am going to talk about because they're the two settings that I have experienced in is outpatient physical therapy and then acute care therapy, which is therapy you get while you're, di uh, while you're admitted into the hospital. Outpatient therapy is like if someone is playing basketball and sprains their ankle and they go to a therapy clinic to get treatment. That's what outpatient therapy is. So in outpatient physical therapy, you if Amber walked in, I would want her to start doing exercise at a slow pace and we would be taking a lot of a lot of breaks. And the reason we would take a lot of breaks is because you would I would want her heart rate to come down and also her respiratory rate, which is the amount of times that she's breathing in and out. Um, a normal heart rate for someone just sitting here at rest is between 60 and 80 beats per minute, and a normal respiratory rate, the amount of times I'm breathing in and out per minute, is between 12 and 20 breaths a minute. So when I would get a client in outpatient therapy, the first thing that I would do is calculate their max heart rate. And the way that you do that is you take 220 and you subtract the person's age. The ideal heart rate to hit when you're doing physical activity is between 50% and 85% of your maximum heart rate. So um, Amberlynn's max heart rate, because I took 220 minus 28, which is her age, is 192. And then 50 to 85 percent of that is a range of 96 to 163 beats per minute. So when we were doing our exercises, I would be checking her heart rate pretty consistently to make sure that we were still running in that safe range. So any time that her heart rate would get greater than 163 or started pushing towards that 163, we'd sit down and we'd take a rest. So when you're working with someone who's extremely deconditioned like Amberlynn is, you're gonna be spending more time in your session resting than you are actually doing an activity, but that's solely because you're, 
you're doing, you're trying to keep the patient safe and you're only doing what they're able to handle because you can't, you don't want to push them too far, especially someone who has as many challenges as Amberlynn Reed because it's going to send you to a place that's, you know, critical mode, call in the ambulance. So you want to work out in a safe zone in their heart rate. As a physical therapist, if I was working with Amberlynn in an outpatient setting, I would be focusing on building up her endurance. That would be any exercise that's going to increase her heart rate. And actually in those exercise videos that she put out, a lot of those exercises were great. Walk, marching in place, walking around, um, doing laps. And even the arm and leg exercises are things that, <coughs> that we would do in therapy. But the way that I would have done it for her was have her do like a set of 10 reps take a break and then do 10 more reps and take a break because a lot of times you're going to find that you're going to be able to do more repetitions if you just sit down and take take a little bit of a break in between each set. One barrier I wanted to point out to Amberlynn walking into a physical therapy clinic and um, getting therapy would be that none of the equipment in most physical therapy places are going to support someone that weighs 567 pounds it would be a lot of just standing at at the parallel bars which are something that we use to kind of help people that they'll hold on to to help keep their balance and just doing body weight exercises because I can't we, I wouldn't be able to put her on a bike I wouldn't be able to put her on a treadmill when you when she weighs that much all right so now we're going to get into the acute care side of physical therapy, which is the hospital setting, which is what I'm working in and have the most experience in. Um, the only way that Amberlynn would get acute care physical therapy is if she got admitted to a hospital for some illness. So you have to keep in mind that a lot of people that I see on a daily basis are people that are very sick, that are coming in. So the physical therapy sessions are not the same as outpatient. In most outpatient clinics, you're getting around a 60-minute treatment, where in acute care, you're getting about 30 minutes because the, the patients are sick and they can't handle any more than that. One thing to point out is that if Amberlynn walked into a hospital and got admitted, she would need special equipment in her room. She would need what we call bariatric equipment, and that's equipment that's made for people that weigh more than 350 pounds. Like, I couldn't stick a walker or a cane in front of Amber Lynn that I grabbed from anywhere because it won't support more than 350 pounds. I'd have to get a specialized walker. Um, she would most definitely need a specialized bed in the hospital. It would have to be a bariatric bed. It'd have to be a bigger, wider bed, and more than likely they'd throw an air mattress on it that blows up and kind of rotates her while she's in bed because she would be extremely prone to pressure sores, bed sores, because when you put any pressure on your skin on a firm surface, it compresses the blood vessels that are supplying the blood to that area of the skin. And that can cause skin breakdown. You need to have adequate blood flow. So the air mattress is going to keep her from having any like pressure spots in the bed and again along the same lines as outpatient you would start with slow exercises with lots of rest breaks just to keep her vital signs under um, control and a lot of times in the hospital I don't I don't calculate max, max heart rate or anything like that if I see someone's heart rate into the 130s into the 140s I'm sitting them down and we're resting um, because I don't want them to be up that high, especially when they're acutely ill. I also pay attention to respiratory rate in the hospital a lot more than I do an outpatient. If I see it hitting right around 20, we're sitting down and we're taking a break. Again, just to keep everything under control, just to be extra safe, because again, these people are pretty ill and that's why they're in the hospital. Recently, I was working with a guy that weighed 486 pounds and when he came into the hospital he was in one of those specialty beds with the specialty mattress that flowed the air through and the first day all we did was roll in bed roll on the right side roll onto the left side because that's all he could tolerate and so he was there for three to four weeks i believe so each day we did a little bit more and we just worked on building up endurance so Eventually what happened was, you know, we got sitting on the edge of the bed and then we worked on standing and walking and a lot of times 
he we would do a whole loop around the nurse's station which is 250 feet we'd sit we'd rest we let everything kind of calm down and come back to normal and then we'd get up and we'd walk another 250 feet sit down take a break so on and so forth repeated until you know he felt like he couldn't do anymore and we had gotten a pretty good workout in and i wanted to kind of go back to the weight loss doctor who told her to do two minutes of walking five times a day. That's pretty much the same concept as what I do. I did with the guy that came into the hospital. You did, you know, one solid walk, you rested, and then you did it again. Because the only way that you're going to build up endurance is if you do something repeatedly over and over and over again. For example, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go do a half hour run and then expect to go run a marathon the next day. I have to build up my endurance, build up my conditioning and get my muscles and my heart and my lungs used to running a long time so that I can go from running 30 minutes to running a marathon. And it would be the same thing with Amber Lynn. Of course, she would walk for a minute or two minutes and then we'd take a rest and we would hope to be able to build up so that she could tolerate a therapy session of around an hour of, you know, nonstop movement with a few breaks in between, but not as many as we would need when we started. So I think I've <laughs> inundated you with enough information today. Um, I hope that I was able to explain myself in a way that made sense and that the numbers didn't get confusing. If anybody has any questions about anything, drop some comments, let me know. I will definitely answer them. Um, if anyone has any other suggestions of things they'd like me to talk about as far as like physical therapy and Amber's condition and things like that, let me know down there. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thank you if you got to this point in the video. I really appreciate it. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to me. Um, I'm going to keep doing some reactions and I'll definitely do some more sit down and just talk videos. Um, with some ideas that I have. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for those. Uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.